Well, I believe that uh, uh, the uh, situation with uh, a lot of changes uh, in the community and on council uh, require uh, uh, an approach that uh, is balanced and accountable uh, to the various uh, very serious issues that uh, we're confronted with. Uh, those being uh, uh, post-COVID infrastructure, uh, a lot of uh, uh, growth in the community, stresses with regard to uh, uh, housing and affordability, uh, we've also got it very uh, seriously under under uh, uh, supported uh, uh, community in in homelessness. Uh, these uh, uh, things demand uh, uh, action, but uh, we must be uh, sure that uh, uh, the approach is balanced. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, I'm looking forward to running for regional council this fall to bring together my professional experience as an urban planner, uh, working in communities across Ontario to work on solutions to their uh, their issues and, th and their problems, uh, as well as my community uh, work here in Kitchener, um, most recently as the chair of the city's active transportation uh, and trails advisory committee, um, and where we brought through important projects like the downtown cycling grid and the new cycling and trails master plan. Um, I moved here uh, after school, um, after finishing up at the University of Waterloo uh, because of the community and uh, looking forward to serving the community on regional council. I'm running for council because I feel um, that I should give back to the community. This community has really been very supportive of me over the years. I've uh, lived here for quite a few years and um, I've accessed a lot of the services and I'd really just like to give back to the community as best I can. Well, um, I saw that this uh, election coming up, I was concerned a bit because we're, we're in very turbulent times uh, with the economy coming out of pandemic, uh, coming out of COVID, sort of, uh, before we hit the next wave. But I had a lot of concerns about the financial pressures, inflation, other costs that were hitting us. And I also was concerned about the number of people that I saw stepping away and retiring, we'll say, from politics. Uh, regional council specifically. And so I wanted to step forward and offer my experience having been on regional council before and also a fresh perspective because I haven't been there for quite a long time. And I think that there's a number of things that need to be looked at in terms of policing, our budget, uh, housing, affordable housing in the, in the camps. And I just wanted to offer my experience and my perspective to the people of the Waterloo region. Well, I have always been involved in my community, uh, I'm, and I feel it's time to give back. Um, I've always been interested in politics and helping people, and I feel that this is going to be the opportunity for me to give back to my community. Um, yeah, I've been involved in different uh, social clubs. I'm currently the president of the Preston Legion, um, and yeah, I just want to give back to my community in any way I can. You know something? I love this city. I honestly think it's the best place to just live, work, and raise a family. But that doesn't mean we're not without our problems. In fact, right now we've got some really serious problems. The unsheltered crisis in this region has reached epic proportions. When you combine that with the lack of affordable housing in this region, we've got problems that really need to be dealt with. So I come from a family where you weren't allowed to present a problem unless you're willing to be part of the solution. And that's why I'm here. I'm throwing my hat in the ring and I'm asking you for your vote on October 24th. Why am I running for council? I want to create meaningful change at the regional council table. And I have a young family. I have worked at the region of Waterloo, the city of Waterloo. I understand the way things operate and ways we can do things differently, way we can be, ways we can be more aligned with the community and the community needs and the growing needs. So I decided to run to create that change, to make sure that the decisions that are being made now affect the future, our future generations in meaningful ways. For more than three decades, I've been involved in uh, trying to advance uh, evidence-based solutions uh, in community across Waterloo Region, sometimes at the provincial level, sometimes at the national level. And I've been involved as a, as a citizen, as a volunteer. I've uh, worked in nonprofits and uh, most recently had an inside glimpse of regional government. And I see that the regional council table, if, if voters of Kitchener so desire it, um, really is the next step in that evolution. I think um, a tremendous amount of expertise in some subject matter areas and uh, you know, more than three decades of experience. So 
when people were calling and reaching out over the spring and summer uh, suggesting that I run, um, I hadn't considered it before, uh, but here we are, and uh, I'm, I'm a sincere candidate to advance those evidence-based solutions that, that are grounded in equity and the wisdom of community. I've been thinking about this question a lot. Uh, I've ran before, so uh, the first time I ran, I just thought, you know, I have a political background, I've always been interested in politics, and there just aren't that many young women putting their name forward. So I thought, why not just go for it? It's a great example for my kids, for all the other young women out there that are interested in politics. And sometimes you just have to be a little brave. Um, so besides that, I also do have a political science degree. Um, I've done a lot of research projects and through all of that research, I've realized that the municipal level is where you can kind of do the most good. I feel like it's the most effective place to make a change in people's lives. Um, so poverty reduction is one of the things where it's a main grassroots level, like that is where it's the most effective. So instead of focusing on provincial or federal, I tend to focus on municipal issues. Well, that, that's difficult because uh, right now we have uh, some uh, very, very serious issues that require immediate action, and uh, uh, that would be our, our homeless and affordability issue. Uh, but uh, over a course of four years, I want to uh, see a greater attention to balance uh, on uh, a wide variety of issues. And that would mostly, in my, my uh, area of expertise, say that uh, we require an infrastructure uh, balance uh, uh, economically and with regard to uh, the fundamentals of our uh, uh, infrastructure, whether it be uh, uh, medical services uh, and uh, social supports or uh, 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 infrastructure economically. Thank you so much. There's really two key issues that, to me, I hear about most often at the door. Uh, the first being housing, the second being transportation. On the housing front, the region can continue to be leaders in uh, solving the homelessness crisis uh, by addressing affordable housing, by building more supportive housing, uh, by working with community partners who do so much great work uh, to provide those spaces and making sure they're adequately funded and have the resources they need, uh, but also by looking uh, at innovative solutions and expanding uh, models like the cooperative housing model. On the transportation front, we've done a lot of great work on rapid transit and transit over the past number of years, uh, but really looking forward to uh, two-way all-day GO trains, continuing to advocate for that, as well as new GO bus connections in the interim to connect us to places like Guelph, Brantford, and Hamilton. There's a, a few issues. Um, I think that housing is probably the biggest issue that uh, is in the forefront of everyone's mind, and uh, that that issue uh, post-pandemic, we really need to focus on the change in the economy and how that has affected um, the, uh, the people in the area and what their the availability of housing is. And I think that um, the, the encampments are symptomatic of a bigger problem that we need to address. Uh, so housing is the umbrella that uh, I think that really needs to be addressed somehow and and I appreciate that the federal government and regional council are already trying to work with that but I would like to uh, be involved in, in some of those uh, proposals for resolution or for uh, working through that problem. Well the key issue is affordable housing. Uh, that is the almost the never-ending issue. So what I want to do is I want to see us move even further on affordable housing than we have so far. Uh, I want us to see how we deal with the camps. Uh, I think the issue for us is the housing continuum has always been uh, shelters on up and uh, encampments have always been there, but we haven't really addressed the issue as well as we should have. And I'm glad to see that the region has started to move in that direction. And so I wanna ensure that we are treating people with compassion. We are looking at the social issues uh, in our economy. And at the same time that we're managing our budget and our affairs as best we can to maintain the high, um, credit rating that the region has maintained because if we can't maintain a strong credit rating and we can't maintain a strong budget, then we really can't do as much as we'd like to in our community. Well, there's uh, many of them. Uh, homelessness is one. Um, I, affordable housing is another, which kind of ties into it. 
basically, uh, those are the ones that I want to look at with my financial background and my background in residential uh, real estate in the mortgage side. I know what the uh, issues are when it comes to finding the, the housing. Um, when people are looking for rentals and things like that, uh, the, the affordability is not there. So that's one of the things that I want to help tackle when I get in there, uh, if I get in there, if I'm elected, is uh, to make sure that uh, people can find housing and uh, we help get people off the street that want to. I think the biggest issue that our region is facing right now is affordable housing. I've got two boys, Brian and Aaron, and when they grow up, I want them to be able to afford to live, work, and raise a family here too. And right now that's becoming more and more harder to achieve. Currently, the cost of a house in this region averages at about $875,000. And the average rent for a one bedroom apartment is $1,700 a month. Is that affordable? We have to increase the supply of housing available to people. We need to speed up the approvals process here at both the region and the city and find ways where we can find efficiencies. And then we have to really look at different ways in which we can open up the amount of housing available to the people of Waterloo Region, even if that means using some of our precious farmland. The key issues that I would like to tackle, and I believe they're kind of my focus areas, they're based on what I am hearing in the community. First and foremost is housing accessible housing, affordable housing, housing the unhoused. We are in a, a situation in this region where we do not have enough homes. The homes that we do have are not affordable for many. And then we have a unhoused uh, crisis that is happening. And as we scale and grow to get to 1 million people, we need to be thinking about how we are building, how we are supporting those who need homes and ensuring that homes are affordable. So I think that is one of the number one uh, reasons that uh, run one, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that is one, the number one uh, concern that I'm hearing at the door. There are multiple issues facing uh, voters uh, in Kitchener, across Waterloo Region, across this country, and they're, they're often interlinked. And we know that solutions that are more upstream, more preventative in nature, often address multiple issues at the same time. So we've heard loud and clear that there is a housing affordability uh, issue. We have a humanitarian crisis with the number of people who are forced to live in tents on, uh, across Waterloo Region. We have an exploding healthcare system. Many of the solutions uh, are structural in nature. And while regional council doesn't hold all the jurisdiction and all the resources that is needed, um, there, there is much that we can do at the local level. And often that involves uh, a community at, at the core, um, relying on the experts uh, in community, in the public sector, in the private sector. So yes, uh, homelessness, housing, uh, the healthcare system, the drug poisoning crisis, which I've personally watched unfold um, along with my colleagues, um, those are all major issues uh, that, that I intend to bring my expertise in and formidable experience to bear if elected to regional council. Ooh, that's a hard one because there are a lot of issues that I would love to take a stab at. Um, I think one of the key things right now is affordability and that kind of does tie into affordable housing, homelessness, um, even our growth planning. Uh, it's just, it's hard right now. A lot of people are struggling, so rentals are high, the cost of living is high, the cost of food is high, and I feel like at the local level we have the opportunity to engage people and find the best ways to improve their everyday lives. Um, I think also that ties into things like even transit, um, just a lot of things that would make people... Um, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think affordability is definitely a thing, and it's probably on the top of people's minds. I absolutely support it. I believe that uh, uh, they are uh, uh, utilizing only a, a modest amount of, of uh, urban uh, land expansion, and this is a good thing. 
Uh, in addition, the uh, uh, region is retaining their focus on uh, sustainability, uh, uh, equity, inclusion, and uh, environmental respect. Uh, so these are, are particularly uh, powerful uh, things that uh, we have to uh, uh, continue on through uh, uh, the uh, period of the uh, uh, official plan. Thanks for that great question. Uh, as an urban planner, I, I wholeheartedly support the amendment to the region's official plan. Uh, a tremendous amount of work went into that process to engage the development community, other stakeholders and residents um, in what was a uh, groundbreaking regional official plan that was first approved a number of years back. And so this amendment really sets the stage for fiscal responsibility for the region um, by limiting outward growth and allowing us to concentrate on our existing built up area. Um, it also allows us to build great neighborhoods um, in, in both the greenfield areas, uh, which are undeveloped, and our urban built up areas, uh, and continue to focus on uh, building great communities around transit uh, that are walkable and allow folks to have a great quality of life. Um, I was just reading that through and uh, I do support their official plan. I think that it's well thought out and uh, thorough, and uh, I would be supportive of that. I'd like to have some input into uh, small changes in it, and, uh, and I think that we all have to work together as a council to, uh, to, to work within the region, but uh, I think that I am generally supportive of their proposal and the direction that they plan to go for the region. Oh, I absolutely support the work that the original official plan uh, is doing. Uh, you may not know I have a podcast myself called the Old Grey Mayors podcast where I interview a number of people. And, and um, one of the people that I've interviewed there is Jerry Thompson, who's a former CAO for uh, the region of Waterloo. And the region has always been an innovator with respect to the official plan. Uh, we've always been looked at by other communities as innovative and forward thinking. And the protections that we have for the countryside line, the concepts of the 15-minute uh, community in terms of getting access to work and, and essentials that you need to move around, the intensification that is discussed in it, um, I, I'm a strong supporter of that. It's another reason to have experienced leadership back on regional council because that official plan is going to be attacked by developers. And during my time on council from 2010 to 2014, we dealt with that issue and we were able to work that issue out and it's going to happen again. I there's bits and pieces um, some of the environmental stuff that uh, they have come across I want the, to re, re look at um, but overall the region is going in the right direction um, but the environmental impact is one I want more uh, questions on and that I have questions on I want to be 100% clear that I'm absolutely in favor of urban intensification I live in downtown Kitchener in the shadow of Kitchener City Hall and I love seeing all the development and the revitalization of our downtown. But I also recognize that I'm not the only kind of consumer out there. And there's a lot of other people that are looking to own a property in this city. The countryside line was created with the best of intentions. There was a lot of land that needed to be filled in inside the, the city boundaries that wasn't being used up while urban sprawl continued. However, 13 years later, the unintended consequence of this is we've actually inadvertently turned our city into Canada's largest gated community. It's become very exclusive to live in our city. And now we have bedroom communities hopping up or popping up, excuse me, all across the area in places like Tavistock, Woodstock and Tilsonburg. And it's just creating more and more commuters to our city and we're losing out on that tax base. For that reason, I am opposed to the recent amendment. I think the official plan amendment has, uh, it's, it's definitely something that I can wrap my head around now. I think the community supports it. We know we need to build, we need to develop, we need to create um, uh, a space for those who are looking to move into the region. I also believe that we need to protect that hard edge boundary we have in that farmland. I think one of the best things about this community is the rural areas and the farmland that we have. And we can look at ways to develop in the core and also in the suburbs. And, and I do support the regional official plan. 
I do believe though that, you know, it is it is a start to kind of where we are gonna go in, in the future uh, with that. So I am glad that they amended it. I am glad that they took into consideration what the community was saying. Most of the decisions have to be informed by community. So I am in support of the regional official plan. I began community work at a early age and that early work uh, was really centered around um, getting to better environmental policy, getting to uh, urban and rural planning that was respectful of the needs of uh, the people who live there and the environment. And that work has continued to the present day. In Waterloo Region, um, more than other municipalities, we've been pretty good at you know, maintaining farmland that puts food on our tables, um, at maintaining some of the natural areas, but there is much more to do. So I am supportive of, of uh, land use planning guidelines that uh, build human scale, uh, compact uh, uh, the cities for, for all of us to live, work, and play. And you know, in the mid 90s, uh, I, I was quite involved in, in developing amendments to the Planning Act that would have reined in urban sprawl and made it uh, a more sustainable situation, not just for the environment, but for the people who live there and for businesses who uh, are, are faced with ever increasing congestion costs on our roads and highways. So I will continue to advance uh, policies that help, not harm. I think that it is good um, that we have been listening to the people's conversations and we've done a lot of consultations and that we are taking absolutely everything into consideration. Um, it's not an easy thing to try to um, build within our limits. We've kind of made a stand to protect the countryside line. Uh, so in order to do that, we have to prioritize certain things. So by looking at the growth plan, um, I think it could be slightly more ambitious. Uh, personally, I would like to see a little bit more push for building housing that would suit everyone. Um, but we also have to take into account you know, businesses, residents, um, and vulnerable populations and accessibility as well. So there's a lot of things to think about with that. Well, the uh, one thing that I think that we should be doing uh, locally is uh, uh, considering uh, uh, tax reform uh, with regard to uh, uh, areas where we need to uh, focus our development. For example, uh, we want to uh, uh, include uh, a greater focus on missing middle uh, uh, construction. Uh, we want to uh, uh, ensure that there's uh, inclusiveness uh, on that and that a number of, of builds are, are affordable. I believe that uh, if we were to consider uh, uh, amendments uh, or uh, policies whereby we could give uh, uh, policy or rather property tax uh, concessions, uh, we would be in a strong position to uh, promote affordability. Thanks for that question. On the supply side, uh, we need to do a lot to work with developers who do uh, bring a lot of housing stock to our community um, to uh, you know, build different types of housing forms in our sort of out outer greenfield areas. So not just singles, but things like townhouses uh, and other walk-up uh, style units. Uh, we also need to work with our area municipalities through their official plan processes to allow different types of housing forms uh, in our existing neighborhoods. And so by doing that, we're building better, uh, more walkable, more complete communities uh, that provide options for a range, of uh, a range of ages. So for example, you might have someone wanting to downsize in their neighborhood. They don't want to leave the neighborhood, uh, but they might be able to live um, in, a, say, an apartment uh, as they look to downsize. Uh, on the affordability side, uh, as I mentioned previously, we need to work with community providers who do a lot of this great work and also advocate to the province uh, to get more funding as they continue to download uh, responsibilities to the region. Uh, to bring that together, uh, also working with new, uh, new operators like cooper uh, cooperative housing um, and, and other supportive housing providers to provide a wide range of options for our community members. I think that there are a multitude of options available to uh, the region and the municipalities, um, depending on the funding available and depending on the budget. Um, I think the obvious is uh, to subsidize housing. 
there's also uh, different uh, options of, of perhaps uh, areas that are unoccupied now that could be adapted uh, to suit housing. Um, those are some of the thoughts that I have. Um, I, I think that I would like to work with um, people that are affected to come up with some solutions rather than to impose solutions on people because I think that um, it would be a much more sustainable uh, solution if we're all involved in making changes. Yeah, that's uh, that's a really difficult one for the municipalities because, first of all, municipalities are very limited in their revenue sources. We really have only one main revenue source, which is property taxes, and we can only go so so far into that. Um, the upper tiers of government, the provincial and federal governments, they draw, I'll say, suck out a lot of the tax dollars from our community. And what we need to do is get some of that back. The problem is whenever the federal or provincial governments bring money back to us, it's always for a specific targeted program. I'd like to see the provincial and federal governments give us an envelope of money, uh, funding that we decide what we need to do because at the ground level, we know best what is required. On affordable housing, we have to continue to work with the upper tiers. We have to work with the um, uh, those in the business, uh, private sector, to see how many we can build. Uh, when I ran for regional regional chair, my view was we need a housing czar and we need to build as many as we can, as quick as we can, by all means possible. With the provincial and federal government, that's uh, kind of where I would put on the pressure more so. Um, property taxes have come into play uh, when it comes to this, when realistically it's more for uh, regional issues, roads, things like that. The provincial side is where uh, we need to put the pressure on. However, in the meantime, we need to take care of our people. Um, we need to be fiscally responsible when it comes to that. The uh, There's no magic wand to take care of it, but as I mentioned before, with my residential background, uh, I know which channels that uh, and buttons that need to be pushed, who we need to go to, and I'm gonna continue to advocate to the federal and provincial government to uh, come out with more funding, more, uh, more housing for affordability, um, and realistically, eventually look at uh, um, mental illnesses and things like that. Uh, people need to look at services for that that's where that we need to look at as well i think it's time we revisit the countryside line this was a great idea that was adapted by then regional chair ken sealing and the entire waterloo region council in 2009 it made sense to do this in 2022 we simply do not have enough supply of housing in this region it's really simple if there was enough supply of housing in this area Rent would not be $1,700 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. Houses would not cost $875,000 on average if we had enough supply. It's really that simple. There wouldn't be lotteries for an apartment if we had enough supply. We need to increase it, and we need to speed up the approvals process. We need one level of decision-making for everything in this region. The fact that some of our home builders have to go three, four, five times to have approvals rearranged and changed is simply causing more and more backups, which is adding more carrying costs, which then gets passed on to you, the end buyer. So I'm glad that the uh, federal and provincial governments are looking at programs to address our housing. I do believe that the ways in which we can tackle this from a regional perspective are more of that collaboration model. Our, it involves making sure that we are discussing and speaking with developers and, and addressing the needs that uh, future residents have and current residents have. I also think that there is avenues that we can build on and models that can work for our unhoused population. Uh, Better Tent City is one of those models, ensuring that there are homes, there are communities that not just uh, house the unhoused, but also support uh, the the transition and provide services for them. I also believe too that in terms of, of the ways in which we build and how we build, really looking at where what is the biggest need within the community for our homes. 
So we know housing is a major issue from coast to coast to coast. Waterloo Region is not an island. We are not immune to the effects of uh, the housing crisis uh, in Canada. Traditionally, those are the responsibilities of the federal and provincial governments. And there is absolutely a role for regional council, for citizens, for uh, business, to continue to advocate for solutions that we know will work. It's, it's not complicated, um, uh, but it is complex when you, when you look at all the systems that are involved. At the same time, uh, regional government is, is not powerless when it comes to implementing solutions that we know will reduce homelessness, will improve housing affordability. And, you know, for, for people who are living in tents or trying to survive in shelters, uh, there are good options still on the table. And, you know, there is 6,308 acres of vacant community land right across Waterloo Region. We could use that. We have a history of mutual aid in this community. We have housed hundreds of refugees in short order by coming together and working on solutions. Uh, that's absolutely what's required for the humanitarian crisis that is homelessness and housing. So housing is a very complicated question. We do work with the province and the federal government. Um, we get funding. We also use um, some tax dollars. There's public-private partnerships that we can um, use. We can look to experts in um, different fields to um, see what our best options are. Uh, there's also things that we could do regarding incentives, working with landlords, subsidies. There's a lot that can be done and making land available and prioritizing um, multiple types of housing. So all of the different like low density to high density um, and working within um, our transit lines as well. Um, that would, I think, be probably our best bet. That's, uh, that's really difficult and it really depends upon a, a lot of uh, uh, funding resources uh, through uh, the province. Uh, we are a creature of the province um, and therefore we're uh, highly dependent upon uh, funding from them other than through our uh, property tax basis. Um, so I, I believe that the uh, best thing that we can do to uh, support that is do everything we can to improve the uh, uh, economic infrastructure and promote uh, a balanced economy, driving uh, um, uh, a solid uh, recovery uh, within the, uh, the Waterloo region. Thanks so much for that question. Uh, the region can play a key role in supporting businesses recover from COVID-19. Uh, we have a lot of certainty as we go into the fall. Um, and so I, uh, we, we have the experience in how to manage uh, COVID-19 now. And so continuing to ensure that we're uh, protecting the health of our citizens, but also ensuring that we're keeping businesses open um, and, and uh, sort of daily life going on. Um, to support businesses, there are a couple key things that municipal governments can do, whether it's attracting new families and young workers to help build up our workforce, uh, whether it's uh, working with our arts funds and our arts community uh, to have more uh, live events um, and, uh, and other opportunities to uh, bring tourists and tourism here to the community to be spending money at restaurants and in the hospitality industry, um, but also um, making the, the region a leader in doing what we know works uh, to get through any airborne uh, viruses and diseases as we head into the winter, whether it's improved ventilation um, or masking. Um, uh, we need to look at all the tools that are available to us and put a plan, pace, a plan in place rather that helps keep our businesses open. They, they would be able to deal with the debt levels if they could get their businesses viable again. And I think that a big, M, a big uh, stumbling block to that is the staffing issues that we have. Uh, so I think that, and that seems to be um, across Canada actually, that there's staffing shortages. And I can only um, guess uh, at how and why we're, we're there. Uh, I would say it's probably a perfect storm of COVID and um, the, uh, um, the, booby, or the baby boom generation retiring. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of people that are just not coming back to work or 
we need to, uh, if, in, in any event, we need to attract more workers to the area. I think that that would help small businesses to deal with their debt levels if they could get their businesses viable again. Yeah, um, again, a difficult question for all of us. I mean, we've seen such a devastating impact to small business throughout the entire time of the pandemic. And now coming out of it, we see the problems that businesses are having in terms of trying to find employees. I, I see that in the small businesses that I talk to all the time, trying to find people to hire. Uh, you get small business owners that are doing more and more themselves because they can't find people. I think the only thing we can do at the regional level is to see what regulations that we impose through our bylaws and see if there's some way that we can ease the regulatory restrictions on businesses to open things up for them and allow them to be more free to perhaps save some money, uh, because that's certainly going to be a big issue, cash flow, and to see if they can hire people then uh, with that, re with that, um, with less regulation from us. And so anything we can do to relieve their expenses uh, so that they can put it towards hiring people, I think is one way that we can help out. Uh, we need to look at the taxes. We need to look at um, helping out with rents and, and things like that to alleviate a lot of that so that they can hire new people. Um, we need to also, again, pressure the provincial and federal governments for the education side. Uh, they were able to push through the PSWs uh, for graduating to help out during the uh, pandemic. I believe that the governments can help re um, re-educate people to go and look at new different jobs. Uh, micro uh, credentials that Conestoga College is offering, that's a great opportunity, but uh, it's hard for people to do it while they're working. So I feel that the provincial and federal government need to look at that and I will definitely advocate to do that. Locally, we need to look at um, the tax side and help give businesses tax breaks to hire on new people. You know, COVID-19 has really impacted everybody in so many different ways. We're just finally coming out of this two and a half years later, and businesses are starting to thrive again. And we're running into all new growing pains where suddenly, yeah, we have all sorts of shorting, shortages of staff, and that's making things more difficult. As a region, I recommend that we set up job fairs for local businesses. I recommend that we set up spotlights on certain local businesses that may have been affected more than others, such as the entertainment and hospitality industry. Let's do special spotlights on different neighborhoods in our region where we can encourage people to go and visit. I would recommend that we set up a Waterloo Region Bucks program where people would receive incentives for shopping and visiting in different neighborhoods within our region so we can go out and explore. If you live in Waterloo, you should visit Galt, you should visit Hespler, you should visit St. Jacobs, and you should visit Elmira. There's so many amazing places to explore within our region. Don't limit yourself to just one place. Let's see everything. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, assisting the employers, you know, 2020 COVID has not been easy. I've spoken to numerous businesses that are struggling, that really need help with retaining staff. And part of the conversations that I'm having are about staffing, providing training, and retaining. I think one of the things that the region can do, especially in terms of supporting small businesses, is really providing almost like a bridge where employees who, supporting employers who want, who need to train and retrain staff, um, providing some resources there to help with some of that, that financial cost that's associated with training employees. And um, again, ensuring that the needs of these businesses, we want them to stay in the community, that the businesses are supported. And, and sometimes that means resources, sometimes that means providing additional services within our economic development, working with um, BIAs and small business centers to, to address some of the gaps and ensure that these businesses stay in our community. There is no question that all of our lives, uh, all of the human systems in play have been severely disrupted by the COVID pandemic. And when it comes to business, uh, we've seen some really great initiatives that have helped keep people afloat, um, that have helped uh, people maintain jobs, but clearly there is more to do. The good news is um, 
that there is much expertise here in Waterloo Region, whether it's housed at the Chamber of Commerce or in business improvement associations or, or in community. And it is critical that uh, the new Regional Council supports, in particular, uh, small and medium-sized business. And there's a number of ways we can do that. We've seen recommendations in the past, some recommendations uh, still sitting there on the table. So continuing to cut the red tape to make it easy uh, for small business to be innovative, to thrive, is, is central. Uh, continuing to support the, the socioeconomic on which business survives. So we've heard about impact on, on the labor market, um, and it's absolutely connected to housing affordability. Um, I think that um, allowing them to operate in the safest and most effective way possible is a key feature that we'll have to implement. Um, trying to find creative ways to make sure that they can stay open, run their businesses, um, working with um, you know different business associations, um, trying to find incentives, possible grants that we could um, allow them to access, and. Um, Staffing is kind of hard because it's, you know, we only have so many people and if they're not part of that industry, um, but we could try to do things that would incentivize people to come here and work the industries that we know we definitely have a deficit of employment.